So far, we've seen two functions that Python provides for us, and functions that are provided for us are known as built-in functions. And the two that we've seen are the print function and the help function. But as you'd guess, there are several other built-in functions, and the one we want to discuss now is the type function. Now, recall that in Python, all data are stored in the form of an object. And we've said that an object has three things. An ID that we don't really pay attention to, a type, whether it's an int, a float, or a string, or maybe something else, and a value. So what is the value of that integer? Well, the type function will simply provide the type of the object that's provided as its argument. So let's just show a demonstration of that. Let's call it the type function, so we're no longer writing comments, and provide it an argument of the integer 42. So when we hit return now, what the type function returns to us is information that tells us this is an int. We see this word class. This is saying, oh, the argument that I saw, that 42, is in the class of integers, ints. But we don't really have to pay attention to that word class. Type will always write that, and then the type within quotes that we're really interested in. Now let's try another argument. Let's go with minus 42.123. Four. And that argument we recognize as a float because it has a decimal point. And let's see what type says about it. And sure enough, it says that argument that I saw was a float. How about this? Type of, we'll put some text in quotes. Let's go with hello. And hitting return now, we're told that its type was an str. And we mentioned before that Strings are called STRs. If you want to say STRs, you can, but we'll say string when we see STR. So that was a string. How about this? Let's just change it to a single quote, put the capital letter A, and that's it for the argument. So the question we're asking now is, is a string of characters still a string of characters if it consists of only one character? And Python treats that still as a string object. We still see it's in the class of strings. But I'll hit the keyboard shortcut to recall that previous line. And how about I just delete that A. So now there's nothing there. That's the empty string. And what's the type of the empty string? Well, it's a string. I'll recall that previous entry. And between those quotes, I'll change the empty string to 324.15 between those quotes. So we just have digits and a decimal point. So if I ignore those quotation marks, this looks like a float. But hitting return, we see, sure enough, this is still a string. So Python's consistent. If you see those quotes there, it's a string, even if the text within those quotes looks like some other type. Now, in the interest of experimentation, let's go out on a limb. And let's call the type function, but give an argument of the print function. And it's not at all clear what this might produce. Uh, we might get an error. There might be an exception raise. But let's hit return. And oh, that's interesting. We're told that the argument here, which was print, is a built-in function or method. Finally, I should add one note here. The type function can be useful for debugging purposes, and it can be handy when learning Python to see these types, but it's rarely used in programs. Once they're debugged, it's rare that you'll see a type function in a program.